Hi there. My name is John Bake. I am the CEO and chairman of Standard Uranium. We are a Canadian junior uranium exploration company with a project generator model in the province of Saskatchewan. John, good to see you. Um, and we are going to talk through your business model today. So we're going to introduce you to a kind of a wider investing audience from perhaps outside of uranium and definitely uh, also um, outside of mining full stop. So look, let, let's just try and get some terminology right for uh, for people new to this. So prospect generator means what? Sure. So prospect generator is we actually put other companies' money to work on our projects. So for us, we have you know 11 projects in the Athabasca Basin of Saskatchewan, Canada. What we're going to do is take five of those projects and get other companies to come in and spend on those where we will be the operator, we'll run the program, but their money will come in and we'll use that to fund exploration work and pay our team to do the work. Right. Okay, fine. And we'll maybe talk about that a little bit later, about some of the deals that you've, you've already got in place. Uh, so let's stick with terminology and vocabulary at the moment. So we are talking about um, assets in, in and around the Athabasca Basin. Um, you, you mentioned that 11 of those gives a sense of, you know, you know what they look like and what you look for when you're when you're kind of picking them up. Sure. So look, we started the company six years ago, so we're not a new company coming into this space. We we built the company around our flagship project, which is our our Davidson River project. Now, many of you may have heard of a company called Next Gen Energy. They have a project called their called their Aero Deposit, which is that going to be probably the world's next biggest uh, uranium mine. That is in the southwest corner of the Athabasca Basin just 20 kilometers or 25 kilometers to the east of our Davidson River. So what we're trying to do with the Davidson River is find a basement-hosted sort of Aero 2.0 on our project. Now, that was where we built the company around. After that, we went up to the far northern part of Saskatchewan, where there's an area known as Uranium City, and we staked a project called our Sundog Project. So this one, you know, Uranium City was an area where they had lower-grade uranium at surface in the sandstone, and there were multiple mines built and ran from the 60s right up until the 80s where they were you know, mining this type of uh, uranium. For us, the object up there is to go uh, put this project together with another company called Fortune Bay who has a Mermac and Strike and consolidate that with a group called Aero Energy. Now, that's our first project generator model. That one is going to be you know, explored throughout this year. And we'll get into terms of that. And then we went all the way over to the eastern side of the basin where we have three projects, our Canary, Atlantic, and Ascent. And those are all sort of just north of a, a project called the Hurricane Discovery by a company run by ISO. Uh, that one we're looking once again sort of for the um, right at the, uh, you know, below the sandstone where the hard rock hits there at the unconformity. That's the type of discovery we're looking for on the eastern side. And then on top of that, and we staked a bunch of other projects to bring us up to 11. So for us, what's really driving standard uranium this year is we're going to have five drill programs going on four of those funded by our JV partners in that project generator model right okay and let's get, let's come let's come back to that prospect generator uh, model um th- we're not excluding uranium ex- exploration now or in the future but I just want to focus on the pro- project generation or prospect generator model yeah um you've got you've got uh, so you got four um agreements in place at the moment with Aero Mamba, um, Summit, and Atco, right? What, Correct. Just talk me through so what one of those looks like, just again, so people understand how you make money and why someone would do that. Okay, so for us, let's go back in time a little bit. For us, we got to the point about a year ago where you know, we had 11 projects in our portfolio and exploring for uranium is very expensive, especially in the Athabasca Basin. So we decided to uh, you know, find a way to get other people to come spend on those projects and advance them forward. So a good example is our Atlantic project, which we partnered with Atco Mining this month. That's actually being drilled currently. So right now the drills are turning on that project. And what that deal looks like is ATCO comes in and they've agreed to spend, you know, one one million dollars in the ground drilling the program. They're going to pay us, the company, you know, um, you know, a hundred thousand dollars in cash and another hundred thousand dollars in shares, as well as pay us a 10% fee to operate that project. So another hundred thousand dollars coming in. So for us, our geologists are out there working the program right now, running that drill program. We get paid to operate it, and then we keep 25% of that project going forward. So this is not only a one-year, it's a three-year term. So over those three years, it works out to about 7 and a half to $8 million being spent in the ground or cash coming to us as a company. So for us, we're driving this company forward three years of drilling. Our geologists are doing all the work, they're gaining all the experience for this region of the, of the basin, and we're getting paid to do that. So all our GNA is covered. So it's a fantastic opportunity for Standard. And that's basically a similar program to what's happening with our other JV projects as well. Right. Okay. And you're, you're, you're talking collectively between four, all, all four of those um, agreements, you know, 
a 31 million Canadian uh, yes. investment into you in the shape of expenditure commitments, you know, up fees uh, or, you know, share, share options, right? So yes. that's all good. It, and the re- and the reason that's getting this is re- I know sorry to sound a bit simple Simon mm-hmm. on, on on this conversation but it's again for trying to bring people in from outside the mining space and make sure that they're comfortable with the language and aren't scared off by it right so rather than you can raise thirty one million bucks of your own and dilute the heck out of your existing shareholders you're saying I'm going to, going to use some other people's money and they can earn up to seventy five percent of those projects right I, I think Arrow is potentially even up to one hundred percent of of that project. Um, and whatever you're left with, you're, you're the operator, um, should be, well, could be potentially worth quite a lot of money. So the, it's sensible preservation of, um, you, you know, your, your stock. In, mm-hmm. yeah, and it was really at a time it was quite difficult, wasn't it? I mean, that, that was kind of where the genesis of this was. It was a tough yeah, market. Most definitely. Look, raising uh, capital to do these drill programs, these programs can be very expensive, you know. You know, a small program is a million bucks, but these range upwards to, you know, four or five million dollars to get to get a really good look at a project there. So for us, look, we wanted to give our shareholders the opportunity to get drill programs going across multiple projects. You want to get, uh, as people say in Canada, in a hockey term, a lot of shots on goal. So we're going to be drilling five programs this year. Uh, making a discovery in uranium is extremely difficult. So you've got to really vector in. You've got to do multiple programs usually. And keep drilling and drilling and taking that data. So as you mentioned, look, every time you go to the market and try to raise capital to, to do a drill program, you're diluting your shareholders. So by taking, you know, four or five of our projects and using the project generator model, we're able to have all those projects paid for without diluting our shareholders. Now, the only project that we're keeping for ourselves 100% is our Davidson River flagship. And we will we will do capital raises on that yearly to fund exploration on that program alone. Right. So you, you, you got all the blue sky potential of that 100% owned uh, project where the rest will kind of... What is the hope is that, that it covers the G&A and you aren't sort of, again, raising money to kind of keep the lights on. This is about having some optionality and some value on, on those projects as you um, do these agreements. The funding of Davidson River, I mean, that's, that's potentially has got you know is, is 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 the big big upside here. I mean, how do you see that playing out this year for you? I mean, what's the allocation of time, capital, etc. Yeah. So we've got look, we've got a you know a chart on our on our website and on our presentation where we walk through how these programs are all going to run, um, you know, one after the other, like sort of dominoes. So right now we're working on our the Atlantic project. We started drilling that a couple of weeks ago, and we're going to drill that probably to the first week of April. Then we have a little bit of a, a spring thaw. We move the drills around and we'll get started right on our Canary project in early May. And we'll drill that one through May into early June. And then we're probably going to send the drill crew right up to Uranium City where we'll work on our Sundog project. We'll be drilling that one through through June into early July. Then we'll come back down. We'll go over to our Ascent project and get to that one in sort of July, August. And then wrap it up by getting to our to our flagship Davidson River, get there towards mid August and drill that one from mid August all the way up to mid October for two months. So look, we've got we're gonna keep our gel just going nonstop. Uh exciting to have the drill company going nonstop. The vendors love the fact that we're giving them so much work and, and getting our investors the opportunity to have exciting uh, news flow continuously. We're gonna be marketing because as those drills are turning, there's always news flow, there's always videos to make, there's always updates to give to the market as to how the drill programs are going. So we're not only just drilling, we're also constantly able to continue to market the company and, and give updates to the, to the investor, which investors love to see. The last thing they want to see is a company, you know, go out and do a drill program for four weeks and then be quiet for 11 months of the year. So we've got a lot, there's a lot more to this than just, uh, you know, the JV model. It's, it's kind of interesting to me because it kind of feels like your um, the exploration team, I still kind of have a chance to actually uh, try and, learn a bit more i know they where they come from they they, they, yeah. they they know what they're doing but i'm saying you know it, the more you drill the more you learn and in you know, the basin is you know you know there's a there's a lot more to be found in the in the basin right well there sure is we're still in its infancy for the most part and look we've we've drilled we've drilled javidson river a few times now we've done sundog two programs the other projects we haven't drilled at all yet. So every time you get the drillers and you get your drill just on site, they are learning a ton. So you want to continue to develop your young, you know, hungry, smart geologists, give them more information, really figure out how to vector in on those projects. Now, on top of that, you know, one of the things we talked about in Toronto, Matt, was, look, there is a huge demand for qualified, smart 
geologists, especially uranium geologists who have specific skills for this region. Not only are our team getting smarter and, and getting more experience, we're actually building on that, adding to our team. When so many other companies are scrambling to find good talent, we're adding to our team because what we've got going is something pretty special. And we've got a strong technical team led by Sean Hilliker, and he's bringing on uh, you know some of his peers he's grown up working with in the basin, and they want to join our team, which is a fantastic thing to have right now. Right, and again, we've, we've had people write in, talk to us, and it's been discussed you know much over the past past few months, which is uh, uranium has been on quite an accelerated run of late. You know, the last six months of last year into this year. Fantastic, 106 on the spot price, but it's kind of come off. We're sitting at sort of low to mid-90s at the moment. Um, is this it for uranium? <laughs> it's far from it, actually. I mean, it's a nice little uh, pause. You could say a little bit of a pullback. I think we're starting to see other sectors starting to get some love. We're seeing the price of gold and copper start to move up. Maybe some money's moving around into that sector. But look, uranium is based on fundamentals. There is so much demand coming over the next decade, two decades, and the supply is just not there to meet it. And it won't be there unless more discoveries are made. So look, we're not concerned about the um, you know the, the spot price moving around. We're more concerned with the long-term price, those contracts that are signed for longer, longer terms by utilities. And those are going to start to come out over the next several months. And we're going to see them continually move up at a higher price. And that's what we're excited about. So for us as an exploration company, it's great that we've got this project generator model. Now we've got cash flow coming in. We don't have to worry about, you know, the spot price moving up or our share price moving up and down because we're going to be funded for the next three years. Um, occasionally we'll add a little bit of money into the till for our Davidson River. But besides that, we're funded right through, which is going to give us a, a great runway and not have to worry about, you know, what's happening in the, in the stuff off to the side for the spot price. Right. And, and again, it's, again, just going back to obviously we had a, uh, Lucky enough to meet a couple of times at PDAC recently in, in, in Toronto. Yeah. Um, he was quite clear there's a lot of um, companies looking for projects. A little bit of jumping on the bandwagon. So, in terms of, and again, coming back to who you choose to work with, the quality of those, the management team, the quality of the exploration team, more importantly, and their yeah. access capital is going to be really, really important to you. This is not a case of doing deals. It's about doing deals with the right people, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. I mean, one of the things that, you know, going back for the last five or six months, when uranium has really taken off, I think we've seen just a huge influx of new companies showing up in the Athabasca Basin, trying to plant their flag, trying to grab a piece of land. But one thing that's pretty clear to anyone that comes to that region, it's not, uh, if you're not there, you don't have good projects and you don't have good people. It's not an easy place to operate. You've got to have uh, geologists that actually know what they're doing in the uranium space, specifically in Saskatchewan. You have to have vendors that have actually worked there and know how to drill. You can't take a driller from Africa or down in somewhere in the U.S. and pop them into the Athabasca Basin and expect them to have success. It's extremely challenging work, and having good vendors knowing what they're doing is pretty important. And the same goes with geologists. Um, you know, uranium geologists are uh, a very special breed, especially working in the Athabasca Basin and looking at the technical stuff they're seeing there. So just being able to build on that and have good quality people to do that work is something special. And as new companies roll into the space, one of the unique things about Standard Uranium is the fact that we supply not only a project, we supply the full technical team to actually run the project. And we've got First Nations agreements all signed in place on all our projects. And we have all the permits in place with the government. So for us, they come to us, they see what we've got in place. And that leads to many deals getting done very fast. So look, we moved to a project generator model in the last summer. And since that time, we've done $31 million in deals on four separate deals. So that's pretty spectacular if you ask me for such a short period of time. Yeah, you, you made some good points there because, again, talking to people um, this week um, about what are the what are the roadblocks for, you know, mining companies, for exploration companies, development companies, mining companies, um, you know, and that, that whole um, social license component is way more important than people, perhaps people realize. I think we got lost in the sort of do I or do not do I not like ESG as a as a term, but getting you know getting permission um, socially, um, getting acceptance and agreement and involvement uh, locally is, is is absolutely critical for you. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, there's a lot of companies you know that look at it as a like a big hurdle you have to deal with. For us, we look at it as a partnership, and we want to work with our First Nations partners to help them have success as we have success. So from day one, we've been into the um, you know meeting with our First Nations partners before we step foot on any ground in any regions we work. Uh, Chief Clark with the CRDN and our, with our Davidson River project. And we've become uh, good friends now from the past six years. So uh, we continue to advance that project together. Look, in their region, they have Next Gen's Aero project happening. They've got Fission's Triple R, F3. They've got a lot of exciting things happening in their region. So they see us as something, a future company coming up. So we're building everything from the ground up. And it's great to have that relationship in place. 
Across the north and the northeastern side, we work with the group called the Yathanini, which is a YNRL. They are, you know, a governing body that looks after about seven different um, bands in that region, and they are sort of the government. Uh, sorry, it's not the government. They are sort of the the uh, the group that oversees it all and brings everyone together in harmony. So we've been working with them. One of the first exploration companies to sign an agreement with them, which we've had in place before we started our exploration work on Sundog, and now we're using that same uh, template across all our projects on the eastern side. So. Uh, for us and for our partners in the First Nations world, it's been a very good relationship and we continue to support each other as we move forward. Okay. And then one other thing I want to talk to you about before we go is um, at, at PDAC, we saw a lot of new technology being talked about, sort of the, uh, the new, new time jetty. We, we've seen uh, all sorts of new ways of going about exploration. Um, some of the gold guys were a little bit excited about that. Are you, you know. seeing anything in the uranium space? A lot of it is tried and true, depending on what part of the basin you're in and what type of exploration model you're looking at. I mean, there's one thing that is pretty unique that's starting to show up right now, which is the ant uh, technology, which is being sort of tried out right now by a group called ISO. So ISO had their hurricane deposit, and they're trying that. They took that uh, that ant technology and they overlapped it on their hurricane, and they're trying to map that out on some of their other projects and then drill those right now. So our, our team's excited about that, watching how they proceed. Like we know their team at, at ISO quite well. It's a, it's a small community. So we know the, the vendors who supply this technology as well. So it's not cheap. So before we start ex- exploring with that method, we're going to watch and see if it has success. And then if it does, we're going to move that right over to some of our other projects as well. Okay, John. Well, look, I might finish off and sort of leave you to do your own selling of, of your story. So what are the kind of three or four reasons why people should be looking at you. Yeah, so for us, it's a great opportunity to get to know Standard Uranium. We are, look, a junior uranium exploration company with uh, 11 projects, seven of those being explored this year, and five of those are drill programs. The time when investors make money on your exploration companies is when they have drilling success. So for us, we're going to have five drill programs going. Any one of those can be a, can be a success. So for us, you know, lots of shots on goal this year, lots of exploration. A lot of that's funded by our partners, so less dilution. Uh, lots of news flow coming as well. If you want to see a company that's transparent, follow us. Follow us on social media. Watch our videos we put out. We'll take you right to site and show you what's going on with our drill programs and help you understand how drill program money is spent and what's actually going on. So, look, if you want to uh, you know, diversify your portfolio, have some developers, some producers, some exploration companies, and some project generators, get to know Standard Uranium. Reach out to us. We're happy to walk you through our model and why we're a great uh, company to invest in.